So we have a system of inequalities, and we're trying to solve the system. So when we're solving a system of inequalities, we're essentially graphing both of the two curves. We're going to shade and find the solution sets of them individually, and then the solution to the overall system is going to be where the solution sets overlap. So you're not going to have an answer of, say, one ordered pair or two ordered pairs. Rather, your solution is actually going to be a shaded region on the graph that contains an infinite number of ordered pairs. So first, let's identify what are these two curves that we're going to be graphing. So the first curve, y plus x squared is greater than 4, is going to be a parabola because we have an x squared. And then my next curve is an absolute value uh, graph. So we expect that to have a V shape. So first we need to take both of these curves and we need to get them into a format that is better for us to graph them in. So we need to solve for Y. So taking your first inequality, if you subtract X squared, then you'll have Y is greater than negative X squared plus 4. So we know it's a parabola. We know that it's going to open down because of that negative leading coefficient. And then we also know it's been shifted up 4. So that tells me that the vertex of my parabola is going to be at 0, 4. Then look at your absolute value curve. Um, I want to have y listed first, so let's, let's rearrange this inequality. Right now, we have the inequality greater than or equal to y, so if we switch and put y on the left-hand side, then it would read y is less than or equal to negative absolute value of x minus 1 plus 3. So this v also will open down, opens down. And then in terms of shifting, this has a shift uh, right 1 and up 3. So now we're just going to take this information and plot both of these curves. You can see there's a lot of review embedded in a problem like this. So when you graph a system of inequalities, you definitely want to be on graph paper because we want to be accurate with our, our coordinates. So let's start with the parabola. We've established that the vertex is going to be at 0, 4, and the parabola is opening down. And there hasn't been any sort of a vertical stretch or compression. So the basic shape of your parabola is going to be the same as your basic y equals x squared parabola, only this one's going to be opening down. And then, because this is a greater than, and it's not greater than or equal to, when we graph this parabola, it's going to be graphed as a dotted curve. So we have our parabola that opens down, it's been shifted up 4, and it's dotted because it's greater than, not greater than, or equal to. Now, we need to figure out where we want to shade on, on this parabola. Where do the solutions lie? They're either going to lie outside the parabola or inside the parabola. So to figure out your, your shading, we're going to do a test point. So generally, you can test any point you want on the coordinate plane. The easiest point to test would be 0, 0. So when I say we're testing 0, 0, we're actually substituting 0 for x and for y into the original inequality, and we're trying to see whether or not we have a true or a false statement. So I'm substituting 0 for x and y in the original, and I get that 0 is greater than 4. That's our question. Is 0 greater than 4? And the answer is certainly no. So the fact that I get a false statement here, that tells me that 0, 0 that point is not in the solution set. For this particular parabola, by plugging in 0, 0 and getting a false statement, it tells me that 0, 0 is not in the solution set. So you take a look at where is 0, 0 on the coordinate plane. Well, for this parabola, 0, 0 is inside the parabola. We're saying that th this is not a solution or not part of the solution set. So we're not going to shade inside the parabola. We're actually going to shade outside the parabola. And for right now, rather than actually shading, I just draw little arrows to remind myself that the solution set for this inequality will be all of these ordered pairs that lie outside of the parabola. Now let's look at the absolute value graph. We've established that it's a V, and it's been shifted right 1 and up 3. So we have the vertex of our 
absolute value graph, and it opens down. And again, there has not been any sort of a stretch or compression. So therefore, the slope of the branches will be positive 1 and negative 1 for the two sides of this V. And then because this inequality is less than or equal to, this is going to be a solid V. So we'll graph the V with two solid portions rather than dotted. And then we're going to do the same thing. We need to test to figure out whether we should shade outside of the V or inside the V. So easiest point to test is going to be 0, 0. So we're going to plug 0, 0 into the original inequality and see whether or not we get a true or a false statement. So that will give us 0 is less than or equal to negative 1 plus 3. So we get 0 is less than or equal to 2. So is 0 less than or equal to 2? And the answer is yes. So that tells me that 0, 0 is a solution when we're looking at the absolute value inequality. So if 0, 0 is a solution, look at where 0, 0 lies in relation to the, the V graph, then we're going to shade over 0, 0 because it is in the solution set. So we're going to be wanting to shade everything inside of the V. So now my final answer is going to be the shaded region where the two regions overlap. So we have to shade everything that is outside the parabola, but everything that is inside the V. Therefore, we would be interested in shading this little region here to the right. All of those points are outside the parabola, but inside the V. And then this little region here to the left where you have ordered pairs in here that are outside the parabola but inside the V. So this green shaded region, really there's two green shaded regions here, this is our solution to the system of equations. It's where the shaded regions for the individual inequalities overlap. And the only question that usually comes up is, when is it okay to test 0, 0, as I did here, you know, can I do that all the time, or is there a case where I can't test 0, 0? And the only time where you cannot test 0, 0, or test the origin, use that as your test point, would be if one of the curves, the parabola or the absolute value, if it happened to pass through 0, 0, then you wouldn't be able to use 0, 0 as, as your test point. You would choose any other point. You could choose 1, 2, or 5, 7, or negative 1, negative 3. You could pick any point as your test point. I just use 0, 0 because usually that's easy for us to do the computation on. Substituting in 0 is as easy as it's going to get.